that's concerning right there to me. 60% of students supported root measures to restrict the movement and interaction of people in order to curb the spread of COVID-19. And this is among the student group that, generally speaking, on average, is the least likely to have a problem with COVID-19. Okay, so... One of the things that came up recently that I thought would be interesting to discuss is uh, the Campus Expression Survey. So Heterodox Academy does this on a regular basis now. Um, this is the third one that they've done um, here. So this is the 2021 Campus Expression Survey um, and it just released. And so it's always interesting to see, you know, how things have changed. Um, are people really as afraid? Um, and what have you. And so I thought it would be interesting to go in there because as you know, as I've said many, many times on this channel, <clears throat> that diversity of thought, viewpoint diversity is critical to STEM, it's critical to science in general. You need multiple, perspec multiple perspectives to get at the truth. And as such, you need to not be afraid to express your opinions on something. Um, so I figured this would be a good one to get into. Um, and see what the results are. I haven't looked at it yet, so I have no idea. Um, we will endeavor to keep this short and um, as a short video, but um, if you haven't seen it yet yourself, um, this of course will be linked in the description of the video for you. Um, and I encourage you to go check it out. The Heterodox Academy Campus Expression Survey, Understanding the Expression Campus Expression Climate Fall of 2021. Um, this of course, you know, you go all the way down here and there's more. 2019 uh, fall 2020 report. That was the last one. I think I might have covered the fall 2020. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is most definitely here and available for you. Um, to review. So we will give this a shot here momentarily. I'm still having buzzing in my headphones, but don't y'all worry. I am actually going to get that fixed soon and be getting rid of this microphone and hopefully with a new microphone this will not be a problem. So let's continue. <laughs> it's actually buzzing in my headphones and now it won't stop. So this is fascinating. <laughs> we'll see what comes out in the end here. Um, Campus Expression Survey. This is a relatively short doc, but it should be interesting to look through. Ah, that's why. Yeah, hey, I fixed the buzzing problem. I fixed the buzzing problem. Alrighty, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, published in March of 2022, uh, the Understanding Campus Expression Climate Fall 2021. Again, sorry guys for the microphone. Like I said, I'm not an engineer. We're still trying to sort out the problem. Um, <clears throat> so, executive summary. Overall, 60% of college students expressed reluctance to discuss at least one controversial topic. Politics, religion, race, sexual orientation, and gender were similar to last year's numbers. Students who reported having low interaction quality with classmates, i.e. not much opportunity to get to know other students, also reported greater reluctance to discuss all five of the core controversial topics. This finding suggests in the that in the future... Uh, professors may facilitate more critical conversations if they also facilitate students getting to know one each other, one another. You know that makes sense in a lot of ways. You're kind, you are, um, you can be very afraid to uh, to have those kinds of conversations if you are unsure of how a person's going to react. If you think they're going to be utterly afraid of you um, the whole time. Let's see. Students' political party and race ethnicity seem to play a role in how reluctant they are to discuss a number of controversial topics, with Republican and independent students and white and Asian students being the most reluctant. That's interesting, given some of the postmodernist stuff that's been going on of late um, that could be playing a role in that. Though they, this is just putting it out there, I'm just kind of speculating on what the problem could be. There are a number of feared consequences, being criticized as offensive, that seem to prevent some students from discussing controversial topics in class. However, when students were asked what they would do if a classmate expressed an opinion with which they strongly disagreed, the overwhelming response was to ask questions to understand the other student's opinion better. Yeah? Well, hey, that's good. Bravo! I like that. That's a good thing. Um, though careful with that because i mean some of the postmodernist stuff is such that if you ask questions you're pretty much evil that that's kind of the way some of the postmodernist logic works 
80% of students reported being vaccinated. Unvaccinated students were more reluctant to discuss COVID-19 than vaccinated students. That's fascinating in and of itself. And I wonder why unvaccinated students were more reluctant to discuss COVID-19. Oh, I don't know, because they've been demonized in the media nonstop and on social media nonstop and been told you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this unless you're vaccinated nonstop. That level of segregation is wrong, and it's wrong that unvaccinated students should be afraid to discuss COVID-19 because of that. That's fascinating and disturbing by itself. All right, data and methods. We always check the methods. Remember, we always check the methods. Campus Expression Survey measures the extent to which students feel comfortable or reluctant discussing various topics on their campuses. Data was collected from 1,495 full-time college students ages 18 to 24 across the United States. The sample was stratified by region, race, and gender based on proportions reported by the National Center for Education Statistics and previous Gallup Knight data collections. Students were asked how comfortable or reluctant they were to speak their views in the classroom on five core controversial topics, politics, race, religion, sexual orientation, and gender, as well as one specific controversial topic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Students also reported their comfort or reluctance to speak their views about non-controversial topics for comparison. If students endorsed any, redu- any reluctance to discuss one or more of the five core, five core topics, except the non-controversial one, they were subsequently asked to report which possible consequences they were concerned about. Students were also asked what they would do if another student expressed an opinion about a controversial topic with which they strongly disagreed. Finally, Fisher's exact tests were used to identify interactions between demographic groups and reluctance to discuss controversial topics. Just checking something on the microphone, guys. Just checking something on the microphone. I hope this will be the last video I do where I have this microphone issue (laughs) with that. I'm tweaking something as we're talking here, so I apologize. I apologize. But this is good that they did some um, statistical tests with it. I'm also going to try and play with it in post-production here just to make sure it it, uh, comes out looking right. Um. You know, it's it's definitely good that they did some exact statistical testing with this. Um, I, that is really, really good to know that they did that um, in here. And perhaps it'll make quite a difference with this um, in other ways. So let's think on that um, here for the full information regarding the methods sample, methods data, and data analysis. Please see supporting documentation available at heterodoxacademy.org for the 2019-2020 reports. Okay. Um so they did what they did what's called an in brief kind of thing because I'd imagine the methods are pretty much the same between surveys in terms of how they how they got data, how they did the methods um, of collection, how they did the methods of analysis, and the data itself. So I uh, I suspect they're pretty much the same approaches, um, though the data themselves may be different. And so. Um, that's interesting by itself. So I may go down there. Um, and you kind of saw it when I was flipping through earlier that, you know, you see the R script, you see this, you see that kind of thing. Those are, uh, those are there. Reluctance to discuss controversial topics remains high. Um, interesting. Interesting. Similar to 2020, students in 2021 were most reluctant to discuss politics, followed by religion, race, and race. Overall, 60% of students were reluctant to discuss at least one of the five controversial topics. Okay. Um, I I got a bone to pick with you, Heterodox Academy, um, because reluctance to discuss controversial topics remains high. This doesn't seem like a high number if that's 40% of students who are reluctant to share their views. And also, you know, another critique, bone bone of critique I have for you, Heterodox Academy, come on, where are the error bars? You know there are error bars with this. You had 1,500 students respond. What's the error bars? What's the level of confidence? And is this really a significant difference? Um, these are things I want answers to when I am going to ask the questions. <clears throat> students seem to desire constructive disagreement, yet do not feel the campus supports this environment. of students agree that colleges should encourage students and professors to interact respectfully with people whose beliefs differ from their own. 63% of students agree the the climate on their campus prevents people from saying things that they believe. Um, I got to... Ah, okay. I couldn't remember. I skipped it. I hit it so fast. This is an interesting thing um, because it's about their views in the classroom on five core controversial topics. 
that's interesting by itself when I think about it, because you're talking about just the classroom. This is not necessarily campus as a whole. This is about the classroom itself, which is two very different things, because if you're walking around and you're in campus events and what have you, you may be very reluctant to just on general campus. So you know what? Um, that's interesting. So this is really here about what they're willing to discuss in the classroom. This is not about what they're willing to discuss on the campus outside the classroom. These are two very, very different things. So I would make that as a bone of critique here in that, you know, this is, you know, hey, Heterodox Academy, here's a thought um, for you. Can you do this over again, but just say what they would think about discussing these on campus generally? If it were in like particular environments versus not, because this is not campus itself per se as much as it is the classroom. And that's a different thing. Um, interesting. I would, I mean, I tend to agree with the idea that the campus climate doesn't, uh, doesn't make it very conducive right now. Um, and I say this as research faculty myself. <laughs> well, not research faculty, I'm sorry, research staff myself. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I say that in my own, um, my own problems with this, my own problems with what campus is like right now. Context matters. Fewer opportunities to get to know classmates means more reluctance to discuss controversial topics. Students, school is back in uh, person, 63% uh, back in person amongst the sample compared to 11% in 2020. Well, that's good. I'm glad a lot of students are back in class, you know. I'm glad they're back in class doing their thing. Uh, students also reported higher quality interactions with classmates in 2021. You know, that's good. That's a good thing. I'm going to applaud that, though I... Here's... Yeah, okay. First to a student's opportunity to get to know or dis to know other students in their classes. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. That bothers me. That bothers me. So, does getting to know someone mean you will not have a poor interaction with them? One doesn't necessarily follow from the other, though I would accept, expect a really strong correlation that if you get to know somebody, you're less likely to have an acrimonious, um, uh, bitter, bitter interaction with somebody over disagreement or, or be reluctant to have or be less reluctant to have that conversation, you could also have the converse effect. It's like, well, I, this person I really get along, I don't want them to think worse of me, so I may not want to share my views on something that way. Um, obviously a thing there, but I don't know that quality, interaction quality, can really be measured in just the sense of how well a student knows another student. Because you could know each other well, and be really bitter at each other at the same time. That's interesting. I don't agree necessarily with this being quali um, quality of interaction as much as how well you know a student that you're talking with. That's two different things. I, I don't necessarily agree with the definition of that. Not the idea. The idea I get, but the definition doesn't seem quite right to me. Students who reported having lower quality interactions with other students were more reluctant to discuss controversial topics. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um, if you're if you're talking about it in the standpoint of you've gotten to know somebody, um, you might be pretty afraid to share your views with them. But again, this is not a super high number either that you're talking about 44%. I mean, it's almost half. It's one and two. Yeah, but... This is where I was like, okay, what do you define heterodox as high in here? Because I don't know that I would define 40% as a high number um, necessarily. And why do you define it as high? Um, so fair questions here that I have. Who was more reluctant to talk about what? Political party and race played the largest role. Republican and independent students were more reluctant to discuss controversial topics compared with Democrat students. Uh, small numbers again, but, you know, it is... Interesting. Wait a minute. Independents don't want to talk about politics at a higher rate than everybody else. That's fascinating by itself. Um, it says something that independents have their head out of being in politics, which is a damn good thing, I think. <laughs> but um, again, I want error bars 
for all this. I really do. I want error bars. I want some significance testing. I'm just not seeing it here right now, but it could be further down. This is also maybe like the short version of it, and I gotta go find the actual uh, report. Asian and white students were more reluctant to discuss controversial topics compared with all other races and ethnicities. Um, so the question I would have, of course, is why is this? Because it could be very much so that um, with postmodernism being what it is right now and, and looking at people in certain ways, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it if, if these students are afraid to discuss their opinions because of something that will definitely um, not necessarily, they, 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 how do you, how do I put this? Run the risk of being ostracized um, for it sometimes, I think. No significant differences between political parties or racial ethnic groups when discussing religion. So, significant differences. Oh, so religion's not here because it's not significant. Well, I mean, some of these I don't call significant anyway, because some of these some of these groups within these, like, that's automatically not significant. This is probably not significant right here. Um, this is not significant. This is not significant different. So, you know, again, I want more analysis. The, the, statis the, the statistician in me who does the statistical analysis on a regular basis wants a little bit more <laughs> than what's here. Again, this is probably the short version of it, but... What did not impact students' reluctance to discuss certain uh, discuss controversial topics? None of the following demographic characteristics made a difference in how reluctant students were to discuss controversial topics measured. Uh, where the student attends school, Northeast, Midwest, South, or West, academic area, student focuses on arts versus sciences, family income, or what year. Okay, so none of that mattered as much. Interesting. When it comes to gender, religion, and sexual orientation, there were no significant differences in reluctance to discuss topics depending on whether or not students were part of the majority demographic for the topic under discussion. Uh, men were about as reluctant to discuss gender as women. Okay. Students from most religions were equal in their reluctance to discuss religion, around 30%. Straight students were about as reluctant to discuss sexual orientation as students of all other sexual orientations. That's nice to know. There's a lot of commonalities in here, right? Uh, there's a lot of commonalities in here. These insights offer hope that efforts to equally engage students from all backgrounds and demographics in con discussing controversial topics could help improve campus climates. I hope so. Why are some students reluctant? Most common reason, 56%, for students' reluctance to discuss controversial topics in class was concern that peers would make critical comments to others after class. Ah, Let's see. Students reported reluctance to discuss at least only five core controversial topics were asked these questions. So it, the sample size goes down. So there's 1,500 students top, so it, got, it went down to 895 um, here when they got to this part. I would be concerned that other students would. I would... Wait, what? In fact, 64% um, of students said, I would ask questions about their opinion so I can understand it better in response to an opinion. However, 31% of students said, I would not say or do anything about it, but I would think badly of the student. Interesting. Interesting there. Um, hmm. And, you know, this, uh, I see the comment here in the next thing, and it may very well be more imagined than real. Possible. Possible. It's not like the, there's, there's been a lot of things that have been magnified to a certain degree. I mean, I've done it here on this channel with a couple of cases of cancel culture that I've highlighted. Um, that top one is certainly interesting because that has to do with just comments and, and, and how students interact with each other and what have you. So um, I do find that pretty, pretty fascinating in here um, with that one. Let's see. Special topic, COVID-19 and college life. One, at least one dose is 80%. 46% of students reported that their university was requiring the vaccination. 78% reported a mask requirement. 60% supported measures to restrict. God almighty, that's, that's concerning right there. 
That's concerning right there to me. 60% of students supported root measures to restrict the movement and interaction of people in order to curb the spread of COVID-19. And this is among the student group that, generally speaking, on average, is the least likely to have a problem with COVID-19. One of the least likely groups to have a problem with COVID-19 is 18 to 24-year-olds. Okay, so that's the ending thing there. So I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I thought it'd be an interesting run through. And you know what? You all go through it. You all read it. And also, you know, let me know if the mic has given you, it has, it has improved with the little tweaks I did partway through. <laughs> because I know it's a pain in the ass. You all have told me. I apologize that the microphone has been giving me such fits lately. Um, but let me know what you think. Um, uh, and hopefully the microphone worked with just the tweaks I did just now, because I think I know what happened now that I just tried something randomly. Um, and so it may work really, really well. That would be it. I hope you all have a wonderful, uh, day. And later for the Thursday study review, it will be on decolonizing chemistry curriculums. It's going to be fun, as voted by my locals members, uh, which reminds me, if you want to vote on the next next paper I do, you got to be a member of my locals for that, and that is scrolling at the bottom, so come on over and join us on locals. If you like this video, hit the like button on the way out the door, comment on the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good jazz, and until next time, I'm Adrian, and I hope you stay curious, my friends.